Hello, um, I'm Valeria de Paiva and I am um, a researcher, a logician here in the Bay Area and Rui de Queiroz asked me to say a few words about another loss that hit us uh, recently, the loss of Professor Saul Pfefferman. Um, I've never done one of these things, one of these recording things before, so you have to bear with me. I think live uh, things are much better, but I cannot make it at the time that he wanted you to have this. So I will have to read and um, and I hope you guys can cope with this. So once again, it is with a heavy heart and a somber disposition that I am trying to talk to the audience of Wallach and I hope you guys are having a good time in Puebla. I hope the conference is going well. But I'm talking about a sad, uh, a series of sad events. So I'd like to share a few memories uh, of an exceptional musician, Professor Saul, Saul Pfefferman, Solomon Pfefferman. Saul died last July the 26th, and he did not recover from a what first appeared as a mild stroke that he had in May. Uh, I think logic in the Bay Area has been very badly hit recently. Uh, two years ago we've lost Professor Grisha Mintz, another exceptional logician, and uh, this January we've lost Professor Craig, Bill Craig, um, who was this, a very um, Important one of the one of the of the interpolation theorem fame and a very loved figure in the Berkeley Logic Colloquium. And um, now in July we we lost Saul. Um, Saul means son, both in Spanish, as far as I know, and in Portuguese, my net my native language. And somehow this seems very apt. Professor Pfefferman. Uh, was a beacon of clarity and straight thinking in logic that illuminated both Stanford and by extension the whole of the Bay Area and Silicon Valley as well. Saul's curriculum vita, vitae speaks for itself. Almost his whole life Saul worked at Stanford from 1958 to 1956 to 1958 he was an instructor in mathematics and philosophy from 1958 to 1962, he was an assistant professor. From 1962 to 1968, he was an associate professor. And from 1968 to 2003, he was full professor of mathematics and philosophy. And he was also, and, and he was emeritus in, made emeritus in 2004. He was head of the maths department between 1985 and 1992 which is not a mean feat because almost like like almost everywhere Stanford mathematicians don't tend to think very highly of logicians um, and he also had he only had a few stints out in very prestigious places like Princeton um, in Princeton and MIT and Oxford and, and the University of Paris so I was a good friend, um, and looking through some of his of the 128 messages that I have in my mail from him and about him, uh, I can find all sorts of things. Um, one of the nice ones to think about was the first time he invited me to give a talk in the Stanford Logic Colloquium. That was in 1999 when I had just arrived in Bay Area, and and he actually invited me to talk. He he knew I had done my PhD work on the dialectical categories and he invited me to talk about them and from and I was totally scared it was a very scary experience because Saul was uh, one of the main experts in the world in the whole world on the dialectic interpretation Gerdo's dialectical, interp dialectical interpretation and while I had done my PhD on, on the dialectical interpretation actually on a categorical version of the dialectic interpretation, uh, 
work in categorical logic becomes category theory very quickly and um, and pure category theory kind of moves away very fast from from the logic so I did not know much about dialectic interpretation as bit of log as a bit of logic and I still do not after all this many years and not only that was hard because Professor Feffman was known as being extremely precise and 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 competent in what he did but exigent of the same level of precision in others but there was also the problem that Saul had a very ambivalent relationship with category theory so he he had a long controversy with um, the main founders of category theory Professor McLean and Professor Grutendieck and he he you kind of this heated discussions that they these guys used to have about category theory and whether category theory was or is or isn't a good foundation for mathematics um, made his relationship to category theory kind of difficult. So I was very scared about my talk and 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 very scared about the conversations that happened, the questions that I had to answer after the talk and, and the questions even during drinks after the seminar was over. But I, I but I, and you know, kind of very recent, uh, th this is something that was very important to Saul and even very recently in 2012, when he was giving the famous Bernays lectures in the ATH Institute in Zurich, um, he was still kind of talking about um, about this controversy and uh, actually he did not mince words when discussing what he called the problem of foundations in category theory. So he, if you look at his slides from his web page in Stanford, you see that he says, my view, the separate, deceptive ideological shell game, these guys are not serious. But I survived my talk. And I survived the question time and even the drinks after that. And I was invited again, actually more than once. So I'm great, very grateful for all the times that I was welcomed as a local in the logic seminar. And I was also, I'm also very grateful for the way that Saul and particularly Grisha Mintz, who was a, a fabulous logician who died two years ago, treated me in the, and everyone else in, in this logic seminars. Um, in my kind of emails that with Saul and, and from Saul and about Saul, I have kind of lots of uh, kind of more mundane things like dinner time conversations and and you know when we could meet for dinner or when we could not, what kind of food we would eat and stuff like that. And and who was ill, who was uh, when I had to take kids to emergency and had to cancel dinner and, and stuff like that. And one time, kind of other more in between sorts of conversations where one time I was really incensed that the Wikipedia was not giving him and Professor Dawson their due and not um, mentioning them as the main um, authorities in Guido's work. So I kind of have a series of conversations with Saul about that. And most recently, I had this his invitation from him to kind of for this year, in February of this year, to come and give a talk on work that I've been doing, constructive model logics, for a while, and that I had talked about in Berkeley last year. So I, I was organizing, Saul sent me a message saying, would you come and talk to us about that? And I said, yes, of course I will. And then he sent me another message a few weeks, weeks later saying, oh, actually, I'm going to go for a special meeting for Charles Parsons in Columbia University. So can we change your, can we switch your meet, your talk to end of May? And I said, yes, of course we can. And then on the 15th of May, the message came from Julie, his daughter, that he had suffered what seemed to be at that stage, a very, a minor stroke. So we kind of, there's lots of, oh, everything is going to be okay. We, it's not a big deal. We kind of, he had some issues uh, uh, before with his health, and 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 he had 
done brilliantly, so we kind of thought that he was going to be okay. And and everyone, sus uh, of course, we thought he was going to be just fine because he always kind of bounced back from these small health issues. But um, but this time he didn't bounce back, and we everyone suspects that he would have if Anita had been around. But Anita, his beautiful, elegant, and very clever wife, very energetic and very clever, had died last year in a in what for me was a very shocking um, situation. And she she was gone very suddenly. No one knew that she was ill or anything like that. At least I did not. And all this collection of, of, of things kind of makes you feel very uh, sad and small and not competent when you see all these brilliant guys kind of uh, going away that quickly. So I think, you know, the only thing for people like us to do is to kind of carry on doing the stuff that we like doing and 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 have the best time possible together because because it doesn't last that much i think i just wanted to say that i will miss very much professor Pfefferman, professor mintz uh, anita and professor craig we and I, I hope that they are all kind of having a good time together and, and looking kind of as clever as, and as good in what they do as they always did. Thank you very much. Have a good day.